So today we're going to be looking for cliff structures up in Nine Mile Canyon. I've heard of Fragans Canyon. It's right across from the Fremont Village location up in Nine Mile Canyon there. And it's supposed to have better structures. So first thing when I get on site is I look at it uh, with my eyeball. Just kind of see, can I see anything? I actually did see a cliff structure up there. Not this one in particular, but another one. So I figured, well, okay, I'll put glasses on it. Now I take out the binoculars. Binoculars show me that there's definite structures up there. So let's take a closer look because I'm not going to be able to climb up to these places. So I fly the drone up. You can see here we've got a granary wall. It has original mud daubing between the rocks. So I start flying up this crack a little bit. Let's see what's up here. There's wood sticking out of it. There's structures back inside of it. There's platforms that are still standing inside this crevice. This this is amazing. So now, <laughs> I've got to get up there and see this firsthand. Hopefully there's some structures down at the bottom where I can see it. And we can both get a good look at it. So I'm taking some closer looks. I didn't go higher. I will later on in the video. And you'll see that there's structures above this platform here that you can't see. So I'm going to return the drone, land it, and start hiking, folks. We're at a place. We're in Nine Mile Canyon. A little, doubt, a little further east down the canyon. But we're at a place called Frank's Canyon. A little off-road. We're going to head up there. Right up there is a rock wall. So we're going to climb up this, kind of see what we can find. Now we know that there's elk, we know there's mule deer, Seen a lot of pocket uh, um, pack rats up here. But we've also got turkey tracks. Walking right down the road here. So they had a river in the bottom for fishing, bottom land for growing crops, turkeys, elk, and deer. So we're going to take a walk, see what we can find. Trying something new here. We're going to do a hyperlapse on the DJI Osmos Pocket 3 video court recorder. This is what I normally use to make these videos, and it turns out pretty good. You can see I'm going to condense about a 20-minute climb. Here's some uh, mule deer poop, but we're going to condense a... 20 minute climb to about a minute and a half. I may have to slow these down in the future so I don't make everybody sick out there. But it does certainly make the climb quicker for you, even though it was laborious for me. I'll come across the snakeskin here pretty quick. And it's uh, the second one I found up in the canyon. Just sitting right there. Now, most of these sites, once you get up to them, if they're a known site logged by the uh, state as a historic site you'll find a survey marker up here and i found three or four of them so far in most of these sites and that's kind of a, a way to know that it's a it's a known site there's a there's the pin right there it's a known site but it's a site that that has been surveyed already there are other sites i've gone to that don't have these that i believe were still ancient uh, civilization and, and just haven't been formally surveyed. But I'm just about to the end. I'm going to turn around here in a second and head on back and take a closer look at things. So we came all the way up to the top and this canyon here is uh, pretty pretty neat. I don't know if the camera is going to catch it, but the canyon is pretty darn neat up that way. So, 
We came quickly through some structures. We're going to go back now. <clears throat> Pretty extensive structures up through here. There's coyote poop, cow poop, <laughs> big horn, or uh, mule deer poop. Guess I ought to show you, huh? Talking about it. So, there's your coyote poop, mule deer poop, maybe big horn, but I'm going to go with mule deer. And they're all hanging out in this south southwestern face here. Gives them good reflection on the cold days. So I'm heading east. Down Nine Mile Canyon. I don't know if you can hear it, probably not. But there's a nice river right down there. Nice place to come and get some fish. Good land down there to grow your crops. So you can see why they would pick a spot like this. I know that further south of us, in Utah here they talk about finding flint napping spall I can make an arrowhead out of that fairly easy it would kill it would do its purpose just wouldn't be terribly sturdy probably one or two little smacks and it'd be gone but it would make a nice arrowhead or spearhead. So while they didn't have high quality chert, they didn't have high quality flint unless they were actually trading for it from other tribes, they had plenty of stuff that they could make arrowheads out of. Hopefully I'm making these pans slow enough. I'm going to take a little quick side tour. I know we're all up here to see the Indian ruins. But what was down inside of these? You know, this is sandstone. So what impurities in that sandstone made it susceptible to hollows and cavities like that? Now, you see little walled up structures. So you kind of wonder, is this modern day people that did this? Put up that kind of a thing? 
You can see the old wall structure right through here. So this was built 950, 1100 years ago. by the Fremont culture, Fremont people, Utes, tribes, came out years later, and I do mean years later, and inhabited the same area. And that's why you'll see modern petroglyphs mix in with some that are very ancient. So we're going to head back up to there. There's an old granary right there. Of the village. There's probably an elevator getting up here. I just like to get as close to the edge as I can. I think the views are too magnificent to pass. So right now, I'm standing inside a dwelling. I have a feeling these walls right here are modern construction. The granary is up there. I will have to fly my drone up here to get into it. But you can see I'm on a nice level piece of ground right here. more or less. Now I'm going to exit outside of it. Come in down below it. And you can see where it was built up and the wall is falling down. Pretty substantial structure up here at one point. Conjecture a family or two up here by modern standards. Probably back in the day there was 40 of them up here for all we know. Rocks came down from up above. We're underneath the sea. <laughs> I always like that. Definitely got to look in to see what all this red stuff is. And then you got this turquoise, which is everywhere. And it's beautiful in itself. But I don't know if it's... Uh, what mineral it is. I need Davis. Davis, you got to hear him climb that for me. Here's some more drone footage I shot. Uh, I'm able to get a little bit slower up inside here and get you a little closer and show you what we have to see. This particular site turned out to be amazing. I mean, it was, it was something that I never thought I'd see up here. There's still wood still platforms built upon the wood, still daub between the rocks, and the structure is still there. You can see here, if you look deep inside, 
You can see additional platforms and walls that were built to separate off this crevice. We're going to go up higher. And suddenly this whole piece that I missed from down below becomes exposed to us. Something that you won't be able to see walking up to it in person. You have to fly a drone or be a phenomenal rock climber, which I'm not. But the drone allows us to get up there and just see this stuff. I mean, it's incredible that it's still standing after all these years. Whether this was Ute or Fremont culture, I'm not exactly qualified to say. But they say, they being the state and, and local archaeologists, that this was a Fremont culture. Which means that that wood has been in place potentially up to 1,200 years. That is an incredible thought. We're going to take a look down here. And I'm going to kind of show you, we've flown up above the crack. And now we're going to take a look down. You can see the structures in the crack and the crevice as we go all the way down. It, it's amazing. It really is when you think about it. And to find this in such an easily accessible area for most people is, is a gift. Something that Utah is known for. Fortunately, I am able to enjoy this and experience it. If you look down here at the bottom now, you can see the outline of the platform as it used to stand. Doing a nice drone pull away. This is where they used to store their grain. How they got up there, I have not really much of an idea. But you can see it's a large structure down at the base. That's a huge wall that has collapsed. Later on in part two, I'll show you over on the right hand side, original daubing of some of that wall structure. So I know for a fact that that was part of the Fremont village. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm heading east. Down Nine Mile. They call it Frank's Canyon. This is Nine Mile Road over here, and this is the Frank Canyon Road right there. So I've never been down that way. This is as far down as I've ever been on this road. I hope you enjoyed part one of Cliff Structures and Nine Mile Canyon. Look forward to seeing you in part two of Cliff Structures and Nine Mile Canyon. And as always, thank you for traveling along with us. Be safe.